Hi, welcome to Ask Maggie. Can't wait to get started. It's almost time. Hi, Maggie. Hi. Hi, Laura. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm super excited to get started in just a minute. Me too. Can't wait for all these great wedding planning questions. <laughs> this is so exciting. All right. So are we almost set? Waiting for people to sign on. I see lots of good friends out there. Get your questions in. Almost time. All right. It's two o'clock. Let's do it. Hi, guys. Welcome to Ask Maggie. I am Maggie Lord, head of wedding planning here at David's Bridal. And for the past 14 years, I've been in the wedding industry. I was the uh, founder and editor of rusticweddingchic.com, and I've written five books on wedding planning. So I'm super excited to dive into your questions. Today in Ask Maggie, we are tackling wedding budgets and budgeting in the planning process. I have my good friend, Laura, with me from David's Bridal. She's going to be helping me get through all of your questions. So I'm gonna encourage you to put your question in the comment section below, and Laura and I will go through them, you know, one by one, really get your, your questions answered. I'm super excited to tackle what's, you know, stressing you out about wedding planning. Um, I thought before we dive into your questions, I could just tell you a little bit about wedding planning in general and, and what, you know, we can uh, hope to discover today. So we know that wedding planning can be stressful, but it doesn't have to be. And we're here to help you through that process. I have all these years of experience talking and working with brides. And so it's my privilege and pleasure to bring you my expertise that I've learned over the past 14, 15 years and help you through the process. So today, as I said, we're tackling budgets and budgeting. Again, put your questions in the comment section below, and I can't wait to answer all your questions. I wanna just start off by talking a little bit about how budgeting is a really important part of wedding planning. So for a lot of brides, they hear the word budget and they think that's a bad thing. And I'm here to say, no, no, no. The word budget and wedding planning is actually super, super important. Because all it really means is that you're going to decide where you and your partner are gonna allocate your funds for your big day. So using the word budget and budgeting and wedding planning, super important. The other thing I want you to keep in mind as we go through these questions is that the earlier you can plan your budget and your wedding planning process, the better off you're gonna be. So I encourage couples to sit down, you know, after the, the excitement, the first couple of weeks of you're engaged and kind of all that fun uh, wedding talk, then I encourage you to sit down and really talk about what is a wedding budget, what's realistic, and what is it going to look like for the two of you as a couple. Now, we know that budgets come in all different sizes and shapes. And I always say, just like every wedding is unique, every single wedding budget is unique. So again... It's not a dirty word. It's actually a really good word in wedding planning. And it's going to take some of the stress off of the later planning process. So before we get to your questions, I want to just give you my expertise on the number one question that I get asked all the time, right? I talk to brides all day long. And here's what they ask me. How do they cut their overall wedding budget completely? And the answer is actually really simple. If you can cut back your number on your guest list, you're gonna cut your wedding budget overall. And it makes complete sense, right? The more people you have, the more everything you need. So you need a bigger venue, you need more food and beverage, all of those things add up. So if you're looking for a way to cut your overall budget, it's look at your guest count. That's my number one tip. Okay, let's get to some of your questions. I'm super excited to kick things off. Laura, what do you have for us? All right, so look, our first question we got come through is you kind of tackled it in the beginning but how do you begin to figure out what kind of budget you can have for your wedding you know like what is that very first step that you would recommend taking as a couple after they get engaged when talking about their budget great question and here's what i'll say to that okay again have to do it super early in the planning process right because if you let it go just a little bit longer than you think and you start looking at venues or contracting with vendors you're already going to be behind the eight ball. But here's what I suggest, okay? It's kind of like a, a little fun task that you can do at the beginning of wedding planning. Sit down with your partner, and both of you will come up with the three most important things for your wedding, right? So for some people, they're going to write down food, entertainment, and maybe the location. Those are the three important things to them. So whatever you and your partner come up with, those top three areas that are important for your big day to you, because again, this is about you and your partner, 
you're going to use those three things as a roadmap for where you allocate your funds moving forward, right? Those three buckets. So before you do anything else, the best place to start is, you know, take some time, think about what's important to you in wedding planning, what's important to your partner, what's going to make your magical day come to life, and then identify those three areas. And again, that's going to be your roadmap as you move forward as to where you spend your money. I love that. Thanks, Maggie. And you touched on in the beginning about uh, your guest list. So what if a couple doesn't want to cut their guest list? What are other ways, what are other areas in which they could possibly save if guest list is one of those really key important things to them as a couple and planning their wedding? Sure. And I, I do hear that often, right? People say, no, 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 every single person on this list is important to me. And that's great. And maybe you, you, know, you don't want to cut it. No problem. There are other areas in your wedding that I guarantee you you can cut back on and your guests will never have a clue that you did that, okay? So here's my number one thing for that. You're gonna think about some small areas that aren't really important to you or your partner and you're gonna pull back in those areas. That may be things like wedding favors. I see them all the time. They're left on the table at the end of the evening. Um, you know, guests don't take them with them. And so that's an area you can cut. Other areas that you can cut back on are gonna help things like transportation, right? Do you need to have a fancy limo? Do you need to transport your entire bridal party via party bus, right? Maybe not. That's another area where I suggest couples look and say, well, I can cut back here. And here's my favorite thing. I learned this a long time ago. I can't tell you how many thousands of brides I've, I've shared this wisdom with, and I call it the every other trick, okay? So when you come into your reception, in your brain, you might think, I need to have floral centerpieces on every single table, the cake table, every guest table, um, you know, where your favors are, where your guest book is. And here's the fact of the matter. If you can go and look in your brain and see which tables you can cut back on floral centerpieces and other things, you're going to cut your floral budget in half. So do the every other trick. So for every other sit down table, put a beautiful floral centerpiece. And for the ones in between, you can go to your DIY store, your local hardware store, and you can find simple glass vases. You can find lanterns with fairy lights. You can dress those other tables where you're gonna take away the floral centerpiece and put something more budget friendly in there. And your guests will never know that you cut that budget in half and that's how you get your you know if you don't want to cut your guest list you cut it in other areas yeah i love that maggie what vendor would you recommend earmarking um the most for a budget yeah or good question three? yeah very important and i think you know for a lot of brides this is their first time planning their wedding and it's kind of the great unknown right how much am i going to spend who am i going to spend it with and when so traditionally, you need to earmark around 30% of your budget for your venue. Your venue really does, is kind of like your big guy, right? He's kind of the, the major vendor in the mix. So, you know, we usually say traditionally around 30%. After that, it usually comes down with food, catering, and bar charges. And that's probably going to eat up more about 20% of your budget. You know, of course, there's always exceptions to the rule, depending where you're having your wedding, what time of year, things like that. But I definitely want people to understand that not all vendors in their wedding planning process are going to take up the same amount of their allocated funds. So your venue is definitely number one, followed by catering. And then you get into the other smaller vendors, such as photography, videography, uh, rentals, and things like that. Excellent. Excellent. So let's talk venues for a second. So I know we're hearing a lot. Venues are tough to come by just given the pent up demand in, in the number of weddings over the next couple of years. Does getting married on a, a Saturday have an impact on the budget as far as your venue and, and things uh, that you'll pay for depending on the day of the week that you get married? That's a good question. All right, let me say it again. Does Saturday impact your budget? absolutely 150 percent can't say it enough and shout it from the rooftops if you have your heart set on getting on a sat getting married on a saturday go do it it's your wedding make it the perfect day but i will tell you this if you're looking to sp you know save some money and reduce your budget you might look outside of a saturday wedding 
And of course, most couples are looking for a Saturday. So venues and vendors can charge more for those days, right? It's, it's the most in-demand wedding day. So it's fantastic if you have the opportunity to look even for a Friday night or a Sunday wedding, right? That's gonna save you money. Now, some vendors consider Friday and Sunday part of a wedding weekend, and therefore the charges are the same thing as a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Others don't, so you have to inquire. But I will tell you, if you are not opposed to having a Thursday night wedding or something like that, you're going to be able to save on charges. It just makes sense that every single couple out there is most of the time looking for a Saturday event. And so you've got some stiff competition when it comes to who and when and where you can get married. Um, so definitely is going to help on the budget. And the other thing that looking outside of a Saturday helps for is it opens the opportunities for you to get married at, a, at, a, at maybe a destination or a place that is completely booked up on Saturdays. So if you have some flexibility and you don't have your heart set on Saturday, I would definitely encourage you to look at the other days of the week. I love that. Thank you. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk destination weddings. Do you have any tips or tricks when thinking through planning possibly a destination wedding as it relates to your budget? Yes. So I think for a lot of brides, it pops in their head. If it's destination, it might be a little bit cheaper. Um, and in some cases, that's true because most of the destination, especially tropical locations, they'll be all inclusive. So you're paying one fee and you get everything from the catering. Sometimes it's even the floral packages. A lot of times they have um, a, you know, on-site coordinator, which can help. So there, there are upsides when it comes to budgeting for destination weddings. There's a couple other things that I always suggest couples look out for with destination weddings when it comes to budgets, just so that they know what they're getting into. You might need to look at a couple of things. One, what is the season that you're planning your destination wedding and what is that impact? What impact does that have on things like travel? Um, if it's a resort, will the resort be super crowded? Um, will your guests have a hard time booking at the location? If it's tropical, you might even worry about hurricane season, things like that. So I definitely encourage couples who have their, you know, their mind made up a destination wedding is for them. I love it. They're beautiful. Um, I encourage you to get all of the information up front before you commit to the location. And one other thing that I'll slip in there about destination weddings is the sooner you can get the information to your guests, the better, because it perhaps means uh, a lot more travel, sometimes even international. So that includes things like, is your passport up to date, things like that. So if you're planning a destination wedding, make sure you get all of the information up front about what the costs are. Make sure that you have the opportunity to um, give your guests the heads up with enough time for them to book. Um, and then also I, I encourage people to read reviews when it comes to destination weddings, because you know, if you are a bride, um, you know, here, you might not have the opportunity to visit the location that you're going to get married at. So the first time you see it could be your wedding day. Um, unlike when you're planning a wedding, you know, close to home and you're choosing a venue that you have the opportunity to go see a couple of times. Awesome. Excellent. Maggie, a question came through about a videographer. What, do, what are your thoughts on, uh, is it, are videographers worth the splurge? Okay. I can't tell you how many times people ask this question. And I think it's really important to answer it because the reason why people struggle with this is because it's essentially paying for two vendors where just a handful of years ago, you were only paying for a photographer. So if you want a videographer, I encourage you to do it. I will say a lot of people, hands down, right? They're gonna pay for the photographer, but they ask themselves, how much is it going to impact my budget or do I have to give up something else to get the videographer? So it's kind of a two part answer. One, again, go back to that list of three things. If photos and videos from the day are important to you and your partner, then yes, absolutely splurge on it. Put it in the budget that's then on your roadmap for, you know, the successful wedding day that you're going to have. You can work with your photographer and sometimes you can get one package together, which is very helpful. So you're not contracting with two separate vendors, right? So a lot of times a photographer will either bring it into their package or they have a suggestion of someone that you can use that they work with often. I think having a video for, videographer 
is fantastic at weddings. You know, you get beautiful images then to have and relive um, together. I will caution people that you want to make sure that you spend equal amount of time finding out about the videographer that you would about any other vendor. Ask to see some of their work, right? What, what do you get for the package that you're spending? Um, but I, I do think if you have it in the budget and it's important to you, there, it really is special to be able to relive that day through video um, because a lot of times in the moment, you know, the bride, like it's, it's a lot. And so you, you know, you don't always have the opportunity to take it all in the way that you would um, watching it through video. Yeah, absolutely. Maggie, we're getting a lot of questions about favors. Do you think you could touch on your, your point of view and best tips and tricks on wedding favors? Yeah. So favors, they're very traditional, right? A lot of times it's a food option that you give to someone at the end of the evening. I think wedding favors are lovely. It's a really special way to say thank you to your guests. They've come out for your big day. They've spent money to be there. I love wedding favors. But here's what I'll say. If your wedding favor is going to drain your budget or it's going to take significant budget away from something else that you want to spend it on, it's totally something that you don't have to have. I tell brides all the time, there is no rule book when it comes to wedding planning, right? It's about what you want and your partner wants. So there's no rules. That's number one to understand. And then number two, if you're gonna do favors and there's a lot of cute options out there, you wanna make sure that there's some place that your guests take them on the way out. I can't tell you the amount of times I see them sitting around a beautiful round table and guests are dancing and then they leave and then all that money is literally left on the table. So if you're going to have them, um, you can either work with your venue and have someone who is, you know, stationed next to a table, whereas people leave, they encourage them, you know, please take a favor. Thank you for coming. Something like that. Um, you know, or you make it part of, uh, you know, it's next to the cake or something like that. Uh, but there's a lot of fun options. People get very creative. And, you know, I, I think the biggest hit with, uh, with your wedding guests is always food, whether it's a cookie or some sort of fun food item on the way out. Um, those are never left on the table. Yeah, <laughs> little late night snacks. Yeah, yeah. Ways. exactly. Awesome, thank you. Well, this next question, I love this question. So how do you plan for an investment expected for your wedding party, right? So, and I can totally relate to this. I was a bridesmaid in like six weddings one year. This, um, you know, how can you as a bride level set with your wedding party for planning for that investment to be a part of the wedding? Very fair question. Very relevant to the time that we're living in right now. It's important because everything gets expensive. And when you are a bridesmaid, right? You, you are expected to um, be able to be there in a variety of ways. And one of those ways is to show up with your funds to be able to be with the bride and the couple on their big day. So my best advice for this is um, number one, make sure you talk to your wedding party, right? You're, they're there to support you. And it's a great way to have your little bride tribe. Your community is with you, but talk to them early in the process so that they know what's expected of them and what's not. So uh, will they have to pay for their own dress? Okay, as long as they know up front, then people can budget for that. Will they have to travel? Are you planning on having um, a bachelorette weekend? All of these things. Whatever the financial commitment is going to be for your bridal party, if you can communicate it earlier in the process so that they have an opportunity to save and budget, it's just going to make for a more lovely you know, relationship through the wedding planning process. And then I tell brides all the time, if you have the opportunity and the budget to pay for some of these items for your bridal party, then by all means, it's lovely. If you can pay for their dress or their travel or their hotel accommodations, go ahead and do it. I think it's great. But it's not expected of you as a bride or as a couple. It's not your responsibility. So if you can do it, that's great. Otherwise, just communicate as early in the planning process as possible what's expected of the bridal party because then they just they have the information up front and they know i love it i love it so let, let's kind of keep on that topic so if you if you can offer to pay for things like transportation and attire great but not required by any means you don't have to as when it comes to budgeting yep yeah, yeah right you don't have to it's there's no rule that says because you have a bridal party you have to pay for it but again if you have budget for that it's a lovely way to honor those who are there to really support you and your partner on this very important day. 
I love it. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about last minute changes, especially just given the, the climate right now. Some people are, are moving their wedding forward, planning it back, but let's talk about last minute changes. You know, how much should a couple save when it comes to last minute changes when they're planning their wedding? Yeah, this is something that I think uh, kind of falls through the cracks sometimes is you set your wedding budget and um, even the most diligent of couples or brides who are sticking to um, every penny that they've set aside for the big day, there's always last minute, um, you know, things that come up that you need or that you have to spend more on that you weren't prepared for. So the general rule of thumb is to set aside about three to 5% of your overall budget and have it set away so that when you get to that final stretch, usually the last couple of weeks is when we see these things pop up, um, you'll have that budget there and it just, the stress won't be there, right? It gets very stressful the last couple of weeks with the anticipation and everything else. So here's the scenario for you, right? Let's say you're planning a beautiful outdoor wedding. The venue is fantastic. Everything seems to be going according to plan. Last couple of weeks, you start looking at the weather and you see it might rain. So if you need to now go and rent a tent and you haven't budgeted for that, it's going to cause, you know, meltdown as it would for anyone. So my advice is that if you have that money set aside and you need to use it, you're not going to be stressed. If you have that money set aside and you don't need to use it, you have a little extra in there and that feels good to everybody. Yep. Absolutely. Great point. Great point. Maggie, a question came in about seasons. Are there certain seasons that cost more to have your wedding than others? Yes. This, this is very much like the Saturday question, right? Spring and summer, traditionally the highest wedding months, right? Of the, the whole year. It's beautiful. Um, Yes, you're going to pay more probably for a spring summer. Now, in the last couple of years, thanks to the you know planning challenges that we've had, uh, we've seen couples now. Fall is becoming the the most popular time to get married. So, if you're looking to save on your budget, I would suggest looking at months you know November, December, January, February. If you live in a cold weather climate then you are going to actually save a ton if you want to get married in those months. And if you live someplace where climate really isn't going to impact those months, they're, they're still not as booked as those other popular months. So if you're looking at your budget and you're looking for ways to save and you and your partner are comfortable getting married in one of those months, like I was saying, November, December, January, not only are you gonna save some money, but you're gonna find way more venues that are available in your day than any other month. So get creative and look at those other months and you, you, know, you might just be really happy. I love that, get creative. Maggie, another question came through, is it possible to host a wedding for under $10,000? Yes, 100%, <laughs> yes. You can host a wedding for next to nothing. So I, a wedding and a marriage are two different things. The wedding costs the money, right? But at the end of the day, you're getting married to the person you want to be married to. So you can plan a wedding for any amount of money. Of course, what you have to do is have your budget and your expectation for the day meet each other. That's where I think brides kind of can lose their way sometimes and become frustrated. And that doesn't feel good to anybody. So what happens is you go online, you start finding beautiful ideas and things, and then you start taking that to vendors and you realize, wow, this, this picture is beautiful because it, it, you know, it might cost a lot of money to put that together. So here's where I tell brides, whatever your budget is, right? And if it's $10,000, that's great. You start with that money that you have and you start going little by little as we talked about those three top important things to you. And then you find all the other places that you're going to save. So if, if your venue is not important to you and you can get married in your backyard or a friend's backyard or in a park in town, which usually is you know, very limited rental fees with it, you can host your wedding for any amount of money. But you want to make sure that your expectation of what you want on the day matches your budget. But to answer your question once again, can you have plan a wedding for under $10,000? Yes, you can plan a wedding for under five, three, two, doesn't matter. There is always a budget and there's always a way to plan your dream day where they meet together. I love that and get creative. On, on the topic of creativity, Maggie, do DIY projects actually save money in your, in your wedding budget? 
I love this question. Um, as a bride myself who thought I would DIY way more than I should have, <laughs> um, it could actually cost you more. So, okay, here's what I really think about DIY. It's beautiful. If you have a skill, if you have a talent for something, if you're good at something that is DIYing, you should use it for your wedding day. But if you have never attempted something and you're now going to go off and try to DIY it, the chances of you getting frustrated and upset and actually not having it come off the way that you want it is higher. So unless you have a friend or someone close to you who's good at, you know, whatever you're trying to DIY, I would suggest that you look for a vendor first who is going to match your budget, even if it's really limited and help you because all the going with the, the wedding pros, right, is, is definitely important. They know what they're doing. If you have a budget that that's just not going to happen for you and you don't have a budget for, for flowers or whether it's you know, you're going to make all the centerpieces yourself or whatever it is, just make sure that you've taken some time to do the research and know what you're doing. Because if you go through, buy everything, and then it doesn't turn out, and you have to go then to the wedding pro, you've actually spent double the amount of money. So I am in favor of DIY. I love it. I think it, it, it can bring your personality through in your wedding. But you just want to make sure that you have a handle on what you're doing first and don't dive into everything. And maybe just try to tackle one DIY project. Makes a lot of sense makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about events uh, outside of the wedding. So first pre-event, who pays for the bachelorette? Ah, uh, this question is so important because it can, all of these events can get to this point where you're like, oh my gosh, this is more than just the wedding day, right? So the bachelorette party, if you're planning one, traditionally is paid for, it's pooled together by your bridal party and any of your other close friends, relatives, right? who are going to experience the, the bachelorette party with you. It's their kind of little send off or gift to you as a way to celebrate you as the person before you say, I do. So that is traditional. But again, I encourage people to open up the lines of communication. And so that way bridesmaids or your bridal party would know what's expected of them. And also as the bride, I think it's your responsibility to explain to your bridal party what your expectation is. Do you want a weekend away or are you looking for one night at a fun place in the town where you live? Two very different things. So as long as you explain what sort of bachelorette party you're looking for and people know ahead of time what they're responsible for, then it usually works out. But traditionally it would be your bridal party and any other close friends or relatives who would be experiencing it with you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So how about rehearsal dinner? Should a couple factor in the rehearsal dinner into their overall wedding budget? Okay, so this is a two part question. And the rehearsal dinner, you know, happens typically in almost every single wedding, right? It's a chance for you to run through the wedding together. And then it's a way to kind of honor everybody else who's important in the wedding the night before or sometimes two nights before, but traditionally the night before the wedding. If you have a person in the family, whether it's one, you know, a uh, family of, of one of the partners, traditionally, it would say the groom's family would, would pay. But we know nowadays, every couple, every, you know, wedding is planned differently and who pays for what is completely, you know, up to the couple. So if you as a couple are paying for the event yourself, the wedding, then I would factor in the rehearsal dinner to that overall budget. If you have someone in your family who is gifting you the rehearsal dinner, and that is their contribution, then it would be totally separate from the wedding budget. But I would encourage you to keep track of what is going on with that spending as well, just to make sure that there's no crossover for what you would be responsible for. Yep, all right, that makes a lot of sense. And then how about post-event honeymoon? Should a, a couple's honeymoon be factored into a wedding budget? Yeah, traditionally a honeymoon is considered part of the wedding overall budget. Um, and so I would encourage couples to make sure that they have researched where they want to go, how much it's going to cost, um, and put that into the budget. Um, there are some ways, of course, as you know, Laura here at David's Bridal, if you join our loyalty program, uh, you can actually earn your way to a free honeymoon and you know take that off your, your line items. But traditionally, I, you know, honeymoons are always factored into the overall wedding budget. Got it. And a great question came in, Maggie, about tools. Do you have any favorite tools that you use uh, when you're doing your consultations with brides that you would recommend using as you're mapping out your budget? Yes. So again, the earlier you can do it, and then 
each, you know, person is really different. So some brides love, you know, paper and they, they're going to just use a, you know, a sheet of paper and they're going to map out all their expenses. Some people are like dead set on looking at, um, you know, tracking their, their funds through, through a variety of different tools. Here's what I'll tell you about using wedding tools. And I'm very passionate about this. Put everything in one location. It's so easy to sign up for a variety of different tools that you think you're going to use. So sign up for one spot, right? That's going to be the most important thing for you. And then you're going to be able to go back and access it over and over again. Excellent. Excellent. Now, Maggie, we're just about at time. Do you have any final, you know, your final tip or trick that you want to share before we wrap up for today? I do. Everyone says to me, what's the one thing that people forget when they're budgeting for their wedding? And here's what it is. Ready? Postage. Postage, postage, postage. People forget that it is expensive to send the save the date, the invitation, you have to put on the stamp for the reply card to come back to you, and you're gonna send a thank you card after the wedding. Postage can add up. It can be over you know, $500. So know how much your wedding invitation is gonna cost and factor in the postage. Excellent point. Excellent point. Well, thank you so much, Maggie. We're just about at time, but really appreciate your insights and uh, your expertise on all things wedding budgeting. I'm looking forward to the next Ask Maggie. I can't wait. Thanks, guys. Bye. Talk to you soon.